All righty, looks like we are going live, guys. Hello, 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 hello. Uh, wait for everybody to join before we get going on this live stream here. Uh, we'll let everybody get out the notifications and whatnot before we get rolling on this live stream. But needless to say, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, how to make a lot more money from the stock market. So thought I could bring you guys some value out tonight. And uh, we'll wait for the uh, notifications to go out. Once you guys are in the live stream, let me know. Leave a comment. Say hello. Hey, what's up, guys? It looks like you guys are starting to get the notifications. Cool deal. Cool deal. Hope you guys are doing great out there, as always. Hope you guys are having a great night. Uh, hello, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Holy smokes. Somebody said they're only 12 years old and they're on this live stream. Holy smokes, man. You guys are crazy. Like that amazes me. Like I think I started so young in the stock market when I got in. I was like 18 or 19 years old, and then we have a 12 year old in the live stream. What the heck, man? That's cool though. That's cool, man. That is freaking cool. That's all I have to say about that. Somebody says I'm seven. I don't believe that. That's hard for me to believe. Even a 12 year old be watching the live stream. Never mind seven year old. But anyways, guys, hope you're doing great out there. Hope you guys are having a great night. I thought I would bring a little value to you guys tonight um, and kind of chat with, a little bit with you and explain how you can make a lot more money from the stock market um, in a pretty rapid amount of time. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy this live stream. We're going to let a few more people join uh, before we get rolling on this. Like I said, we're going to be talking about five ways you can make a lot more money in the stock market. I thought let's bring a little value to you guys tonight um, and, and chat a little bit about this. By the way, hello, guys. Looks like we got people from... Uh, all different ages. Uh, let's see, what, what are you guys up to here? Do you still make non-live videos? I do. Uh, go ahead and watch uh, Financial Education 2. Financial Education 2, I just put out a video that wasn't a live video today. Um, so if you guys haven't subscribed over on Financial Education 2, make sure you guys go ahead and do that. Uh, by the way, hit a thumbs up if you are uh, you know, happy to be in the stock market. Love to hear from you guys. Uh, somebody says the market crashed today. No, the market didn't crash today, but what did happen is the market was having a really good day, and then uh, some tweets were sent around more tariffs, and the market fell dramatically. <laughs> I shouldn't even really say dramatically. I mean, it was like a 500, 500 to 600 point fall for the Dow compared to what it was at. So, By the way, I'm watching this on a stabilizer, uh, or watching this. I'm recording this on a stabilizer, so... Uh, the footage should be nice and smooth for this live stream. So, uh, But anyways, it looks like a good amount of you guys are here. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, get rolling on this video. Like I said, we're talking about five ways you can make a lot more money uh, from the stock market. So I hope you guys get some good value out of this video here. Uh, make sure you hit a thumbs up if you guys do. And uh, happy to have all you guys here as always. And uh, with that being said, let's start getting into this, guys. So the first one I jotted down. First way, if you want to, you know, the first one of the five, if you want to make a lot more money from the stock market, you got to put in the work, man. You got to put in the work. Consistently, I see people who, you know, see the stock market and they see, you know, someone making money from the stock market and, and, you know, oh my gosh, look at this guy. He's making so much money from the stock market or whatever. And they want that life for themselves. And they're like, oh man, isn't that cool? You know, Jeremy has so much money in his accounts and oh man, you know, look at how easy, you know, it makes it, you know, it almost seems like easy. Whenever you see someone else being successful at something, right? You think it's like easy, right? It's like whenever I watch Michael Phelps swim, right? In the Olympics, whenever I'd watch Michael Phelps swimming, I always used to in my head, even though it was dumb, I used to always think, oh, it's gotta be so easy. I could freaking do that. I can swim. And then you realize if you actually got in a pool with Michael Phelps, he would like destroy you, right? Or you watch somebody in track, you watch Usain Bolt, and you're like, oh, he's not even running that fast. I could hang with him. And then you get out there on the race and it's like, oh no, <laughs> maybe I can't. Um, so a similar thing can happen in the stock market where you see someone having success, you see someone making it almost look easy, and you think it is easy. And so you don't put in the work necessary to get the type of gains that you want to get in the stock market. And so the number, the first one out of the five is you got to put in the work, okay? If you want to be successful in anything in life, especially stock market investing, you can't be lazy. If you're going to try to be a lazy stock market investor, you'll get exposed really bad, okay? You're going to get exposed really bad. You're going to end up losing money over the long term, and it's not going to work out. If you really want a lot of success in the stock market, you want to make five figures, six figures on the stock market. You want to have accounts that are six or seven figures in the future. You've got to be willing to put in that work. And what I'm specifically talking about 
when I talk about putting in the work, I'm not talking about you going to Yahoo Finance and you do five minutes of research on Apple stock and you're like, whoa, look at their revenues are going up and oh, their, their net income is going up and oh, that, that's good. I can invest in this company now. No, 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 no. That's not real work, okay? What I'm talking about when I talk about putting in the work, I'm talking about going to a company's investor relations page. I'm talking about listening to conference calls. I'm talking about reading annual reports. I'm talking about reading 10 Qs. I'm talking about the work that a lot of people don't want to do, okay? Uh, somebody sent me a $2.99 super chat. Thank you so much for that. Um, so, you know, that's what a lot of people don't want to do. You want to make a lot of money from the stock market? It is absolutely possible. Even if the stock market is just decent, you can make so much money from the stock market. It's insane, okay? And especially if you're looking at it from a longer term perspective. And as you start building up money and you've been doing this for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, like the amount of money you can make from the stock market is almost astonishing. But you're not going to make a lot of money in this game if you're not put in the work. And so I consistently see people getting involved with the stock market and they think they, you know, they've read some books on the stock market great or they took my Becoming Master of the Stock Market course and they learned the things necessary but they don't put in any of the work necessary to really be successful. You've got to still put in the work just because you know what to look for in a stock doesn't mean you can't put in the work. You have to read these. Every single company I invest in, I read the annual report. I read the 10Q. I listen to conference calls. I listen to investor presentations. And I've been doing this for over 10 years. So if you want to be successful, you got to put in the work. That's just the way it is in anything in life, okay? So if you're getting in the stock market and you think you're going to make a lot of money in the stock market, and you think it's just going to be easy and you're not going to have to put in the work, I can promise you you're making a big mistake. I can promise you that, okay? Maybe you get lucky for a few months and you happen to make a little bit of money or something like that. But over the long term, you'll absolutely be exposed if you're not putting in the work. And uh, it doesn't matter how busy you are. You have to be put willing to put in the work. I'm busy. Like I got this YouTube thing I do. I do Instagram. I got a private stock market group. It doesn't matter. It's still the number one most important thing for me over my private membership group, over YouTube, over Instagram, over any of that, is that I'm absolutely making the most money possible from my stocks and that I'm a successful stock market investor. So if I'm thinking about like, where's my priority on a given day? Number one priority, and I know you guys might not be happy about this, you might hope it's YouTube. My number one priority is always making sure I do the research work necessary on companies. And if that means I've got to listen to a conference call right now, I got to listen to a conference call right now. If that means I have to postpone a YouTube video and I don't get to, a, uh, you know, I would have loved to post a YouTube video on the main channel today, but I have to do this live stream here at the end of the night, basically, because I had other stuff going on. I had conference calls to listen to. And uh, also my wife did have surgery today and everything's good. So my wife had a, a minor surgery today. I don't talk a lot about my personal life, but everything went great. So very happy about that. But you know, that's just, it is what it is. You've got to be willing to put in the work. If you're not putting in the work, you're not going to get the results. You're not going to get the gains. And then think about it over a long period of time. Think about it over a five-year span, 10-year span. This is this brings me to another point. Someone was like, well, someone left a comment on a video recently. And this comment, this comment kind of bugged me because this person, and we'll get to number two in just a moment of the five. But this person was like, well, if you only outperform the market by, let's say, 2 or 3% a year, is it even worth it? You have to do all that work. Why not just invest in an index fund? And that just shows me ignorance in understanding compounding of numbers. You guys, let's say the market goes up 8% on average a year for, for like, you know, most of you guys watching this live stream right now are in your 20s, 30s, or whatever. So let's say you, let's say the stock market goes up 8% per year for the next 40 years. Let's say you get a gain of 10% per year. The amount of money you will have more in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 30 years from now, and 40 years from now will be so substantial. It's going to be probably six or seven figures difference between getting an 8% return, 10% return. So don't come to me and say, well, you got to put in a lot of work. You got to read those annual reports. You got to read those conference calls. You got to, you know, you got to do, do all that work. You got to listen to investor presentations. You got to research stocks. You got to look at PE ratios. You got to do all this stuff. Why not just buy an index fund? Dude, if you can just get an extra two or 3% over the market a year, 
you, you're, the amount of money you'll have 10, 20, 30 years from now is, is such a difference. It's ridiculous, guys. Uh, pull out a compounding calculator. Do the numbers on it. Do it based upon, you know, if you, let's say you put in, um, let's say you put in like $10,000 a year towards stocks. You put in $10,000 a year and you get an 8% return versus an 11% return. And I can promise you the amounts are going to be ridiculous, okay? So it's absolutely worth the work if if you have it in you, okay? That's the other thing. If you don't have it in you, and it, then it is what it is. If you don't have it in you to be a great investor and do all the work, then that's fine. Not everybody has it. Not everybody has it, okay? Uh, I think most of you guys what watch me should have it because why else would you be here, okay? Uh, unless you just enjoy like keeping up with stock market entertainment and stuff like that. But if you watching me, you probably want to be a great investor. You probably want to make a lot of money from the stock market. It's absolutely possible. You got to stay disciplined and you got to put in the work, guys. That's number one. Number one way to make a lot more money from the stock market, put in the freaking work, okay? Don't just, you know, learn about, you know, the things to look for and then don't even do in the work, okay? Number two of five that I jot down here on how to make way more money from the stock market is take advantage of big dips when everybody is scared. This goes for individual stocks, and this goes for the stock market in general. Way too often, folks will, oh gosh, folks will just, they won't take advantage of buying on dips, and it's such a mistake, okay? And I'm not talking about a dip like today, okay, where the market was up, you know, uh, 300 points, and then it finished down 300 points. That's a little dip. I'm talking about dips like we had in November and December, when everybody was flooding out of the market, when we had mass sell-offs in stocks. Those are the dips you need to take advantage of, and those are the dips most people do not take advantage of because what will happen is they'll go down a bunch on their accounts, and then they'll say, gosh, I don't want to invest any more money because the stock market might go down even more. And I can tell you in the stock market, it could always potentially go down more, okay? That's going to always be the situation in dips in the, situ in the future. And so when things are the scariest, that is when people refuse to buy the dips. And, and even in pre, like individual stocks, like, like individual stocks all the time happen to go down. Even if the market's doing good, there's still some great stocks that fall a ton for whatever reason. And people don't take advantage of this. And it's almost like getting free money. Like if you're buying a great company, I can tell you this, okay? I did a video on financial education too yesterday. It showed my entire stock market portfolio I have in the private account, okay? And almost every single, uh, uh, almost every single stock we're up pretty big on in that account. Most of them, at least. In every single stock we're up big on, I bought on dips several times. Okay, Facebook, I bought that stock several times when it dipped. Serious Logic, we I did a video on financial education too, talking about that position. We were up like 44, 45 percent on that position. I bought that stock so many times when it dipped and it dipped and it dipped and we went lower and lower on the position. The next thing you know, we were down 15% and 20% on the position and I was buying, buying, buying. While everybody else was scared and selling, I was there buying. And here we are a year later and we're up 45% on the position, okay? Skyworks Solution, same exact situation. Elf, Elf's another perfect example. Elf, I started buying that stock, I think it was like nine or nine dollars or something like that. And then all of a sudden it went down to eight, seven, six. And I was I started buying super heavy. And then most of those shares we've made a hundred percent or more on. This is what you guys gotta take advantage of, man. And this is what people are scared to take advantage of. Because when you know humans move in the masses and when humans see everybody scared, they want to also run, okay? And I'm talking about real fear, real fear in the market that everything's going to get a lot worse, real fear in a stock that things are going to get a lot worse. Um, and they don't take advantage of these big dips. By the way, hit a thumbs up if you're enjoying me sharing these tips with you guys. Make sure you're taking advantage of these, these, these huge dips in the market, okay? Whether it's the market or stocks in general, it's just what happens. And it happens in a ton of stocks all the time and some great companies you research and maybe some ones you had already invested in. And if you're not taking advantage of it, then... You're just missing an opportunity. And that's what you know, brings me to another point. Make sure you're always keeping some cash on the sideline. This is why I always keep some cash on the sideline. Always 10% to 30% of my wealth is in cash, all times. It gets up to 30% when the market I feel is overvalued and there aren't many good deals in the market. And it gets all the way down to 10% in times when I'm buying like crazy, like a December situation. Like November, December of 2018, I was like buying stocks left and right. And we got all the way down like 10% cash, which is like pretty much the lowest I'm willing to go. And we got all the way down there because I was just buying like 
you know, because it was just like every stock out there was like a, a sick deal. Like it was like shooting fish in a barrel. And where were the buyers? Most folks weren't buying because they either didn't have cash or most folks were too scared to buy. Because what if it got even worse? You're always going to be able to make that argument. What if it gets even worse? Always. Okay. There were people in December, uh, you know, in, in March of 2009 who were saying, well, it could get even worse. And they weren't buying when the Dow was at 6,700. And then a couple of years later, most stocks had doubled or tripled since then. You could always make that argument that it could get worse. Okay, guys, make sure you're taking advantage of the stock market on dips. Make sure you're taking advantage of great stocks on dips that you've done the full fundamental research. And that's number two, way to make a lot more money in the stock market. Okay. Number three to way to make a lot more money in the stock market that I jotted down here is don't sell for a loss unless you are convinced you made a bad fundamental decision. Way too often in the stock market, people will sell a stock for a loss, whether it be $50, $100, $1,000, several thousand dollars, just because the stock went down and now they're scared. And that's really usually a bad decision, okay? If you made a bad fundamental decision to buy that stock, perfect. You can own up to that and you can say, I need to get out of this stock. I made a bad fundamental decision in that stock. I've done in the past and every single person, you should never be too proud to admit sometimes you made a bad fundamental decision in the stock. You're down a hundred bucks in that stock or a few thousand dollars on that stock. And you're like, this stock is down because I'm uh, down because I made a bad fundamental decision. I need to get out of this stock. I need to sell it. Not because I'm afraid it will go down more. Not because I'm afraid of what analysts are saying about this stock or what the market feels about the stock, but because I feel I made a bad fundamental decision in the stock, okay? If you feel like you made a bad fundamental decision in the stock, it makes sense to sell it off. I've done it in the past and it hurts. It hurts. It really does. It hurts to sell a position you're down, you know, any amount of money on. It doesn't matter what it is because you put in research work to that stock and then all of a sudden six months down the road, you're like, dude, what was I thinking? I made a bad fundamental decision here, okay? And sometimes you do have to bite the bullet and you do have to sell. By the way, peep the shirt. Do you guys like the shirt? The holy smoke is a saint, no joke. Chris, my video editor, got it for me. It's like the sickest shirt, if <laughs> not. Um, hit a thumbs up if you enjoy this shirt, okay? Let me let me know what you guys think about this. But uh, that's the bottom line there, guys. Like, like, don't just sell because the stock's down. Don't just sell because an analyst hates the stock. Who cares what an analyst thinks? It's what you think. That's what matters in the stock market. What is your opinion on that stock? Not what my opinion is, not what uh, the guy on TV's opinion is, not what Jim Cramer's opinion is, not what the analyst at Morgan Stanley's opinion is. What matters is what your opinion is, okay? That's the bottom line. And that's how you should make decisions. Not just because a stock went down, let me sell for a loss. Usually a bad decision. Unless you feel like you made a bad fundamental decision, you have somewhere better to put the money. That's completely possible, okay? As a number three way to make a lot more money in the stock market, quit selling for losses when you actually love that company and you believe in it a lot for the long term, okay? Number four way to make a lot more money in the stock market is reinvest gains. Oh my goodness, guys. I, I watch people all the time make money in the stock market from stocks, either dividend money or they sold out for gains, and they don't reinvest the money into like other stocks. They take the money out. They're like, oh, I made $100 off Google stock, sweet for me. Let me go buy something for $100. I'm like, that makes no sense, especially if you're young. If you're young, the name of the game is to build, 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 and like compound money. Like, I don't know why somebody would think, I, I, like, I can't understand that mentality of thinking that small where it's like, you got to go spend that $100 on something frivolous. It just doesn't make sense. The name of the game is to build, build, build compound money. That's why I always suggest like newer people stock market or just money in general, and like understanding investing, play around with the compounding calculator. It'll change your mentality. Um, you'll really get to see like how numbers are built and whatnot. And uh, to, to make money from a stock and then go buy something with that stock. Uh, like what? That makes no sense, guys. There's stocks all the time. I take gains on thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. I don't go take that money out of the account and say, let me go buy a new flat screen with it. No, no. Okay. Like, like from your job or your business you have, you should be making enough money that you can afford to buy the things you want to buy in your life. Okay. And if you can't, then it's time to figure out how to get to that place. Do you need to get a better job? Do you need to start a business? 
how, where does your focus need to go to get you to that, that place where you can make enough money to buy the things you want? Okay. That's the bottom line, man. Not, not let me try to make a hundred bucks from the stock market so I can go spend it, uh, going out to dinner tonight. That just, it's just ridiculous guys. Reinvest those gains, get that money into more money. The dividend money you make from dividend stocks, go ahead, reinvest that bill, 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 compound money. That's how you get to have big accounts. Okay. No one ever got a lot of money because they were taking money out of it all the time. Okay. Like, like even think about like no real estate investor ever made, uh, oh, by the way, meet Kevin's here. Uh, no real estate investor ever got a ton of houses and made a ton of money from real estate because they got one property and then they just took all that prop that money and just went and spent it on frivolous stuff. No, they, they took that money. They used that money. They saved up. They bought the next property. They took that money. They bought the next property. Even a big giant company like Amazon. How is Amazon built, right? Jeff Bezos always plowed that money back into Amazon. He didn't take the money out. He didn't say, oh, I'm just going to take this money out. We're making 100 million in revenue a year. Let me just take this money out now and go do something with it. No, he said, I'm going to plow this money back into the business. I'm going to build bigger and bigger and bigger. And now Amazon's a company worth a trillion dollars, a trillion dollars, okay? That's how you make a lot of money from stocks, real estate, business in general. You plow the money back into whatever you're doing. And that's how you compound money. You don't take the money out to buy frivolous stuff, guys. It's just, it's just re- ridiculous, okay? Uh, number five way to make a lot more money in the stock market, and then I'll maybe take a little Q&A for you guys, and uh, then we'll end this live stream. Number five is, is around dividends, okay? This is really important. So a lot of people get caught up into just dividend investing. I don't necessarily have a big issue if that's all you want to do is dividend invest and you're all you want to buy is stocks that have dividend, you know, basically pay dividends. But what I can tell you is you're going to miss out on so many huge potential gains. Dividends are cool, but you know, it's a lot cooler, huge stock gains. Okay. So if you're, let's say you're just going to buy dividend stocks, you're like, if it doesn't pay dividend, I'm not buying it. I'm like Kevin O'Leary. Okay. Remember, I think Kevin O'Leary, a uh, guy from Shark Tank. He's like, if it doesn't pay dividend, I don't buy that stock. Cool. You're just missing out on massive amounts of gainers, okay? Because there's, what, maybe maybe half the S&P 500 companies just pay dividends. Maybe something around that. You know, Maybe it's a little more than that. Maybe it's a little less than that. But let's say out of the, out of the 500 companies that are in the S&P 500, say 250 of them actually pay dividends. That leaves you with only 250 stocks to pick from in the S&P 500. So already you're limiting yourself on how many potential great investments you can have in a situation like that, right? That makes things, that makes your life a lot harder. That makes your life a lot harder, guys. If you're going to limit how many stocks you can actually pick and invest in, you just made your life so much harder. Bottom line, okay? And uh, so everybody gets caught up in, oh, the stock pays a 2% dividend yield or 3%. Let me buy this stock. And I'm just telling you. The real money, the big money can be made from these stocks that actually a lot of times don't pay dividends, okay? Like I said, I make, I make thousands of dollars a year from dividends. I'll probably make, I wouldn't be surprised if I make five figures or something from dividend money alone this year. But I don't invest because a stock pays a dividend. I invest because like a company is a great company. Like I said, I have no problem with dividend investing if that's just what you want to do. I'm just saying you're going to limit returns. You're going to limit how much money you can make. You think about a stock like Facebook, right? Facebook is a stock that went IPO for 38 bucks a share very shortly after it was trading in the 20s. And, um, you know, over the past few years, it's gone up and gone up. It's had some dips here and there, but overall it's been up and it's like a $200 stock now. Okay. You could have, let's say you understood Facebook and you really like the business model and all those sorts of things. If you didn't invest in Facebook, you just missed a massive gain. Why? Because it didn't pay dividend. Amazon. Amazon's never paid a dividend in the history of the company. If you didn't invest in Amazon over the past, you know, five or 10 years, all because they didn't pay dividend, you just missed out on a ridiculous gain. Like, I feel like it was just six or seven years ago, Amazon was like a two, $200 stock, $150 stock. And now it's what, $2,000 or something close to $2,000 a share. You know, Shopify, you know, uh, we could go through a laundry list of stocks. Google, Apple, for the longest time, didn't pay a dividend. Apple didn't start paying a dividend until like four or five years ago. That's when Apple started paying dividends. You could have, you would have, I mean, you would have missed out on, like, think about all the years you could have invested in Apple, you know, in the iPod years, when they, you know, the iPod came out, and iTunes, excuse me, when iTunes came out, and then, you know, when the whole business was turning, and then iPhone came out, and then iPads came out, 
And the, the business was growing and growing and growing. All that time, they never paid dividends. And you could have saw Apple and been like, this is freaking easy money. They're like, they're obviously like going to become a dominant, massive tech company. And people just kind of looked at it and said, uh, you know what? They don't pay dividends, so therefore I don't want to buy it. And I'm telling you guys, you're going to limit – you're going to limit gains in a massive, massive way, man. If you're if you're just going to buy dividend stocks, you know, you're just missing out on massive gains. Serious logic. Like I said, we're up 40-something percent on that position. And they don't pay a dividend. I could have said, oh, serious logic, I really like their business model. I really like what they're doing. But you know what? They don't pay a dividend, so I'm not going to buy that stock. And so let's say I buy some other, you know, dividend stock that's what pays me 3% yield and hasn't done anything all year. You know, and just because the stock, uh, you know, pays a dividend yield doesn't mean you're not going to lose money in that stock. There are plenty of dividend stocks out there that pay a pretty juicy dividend yield of four, five, six, seven percent and actually go down. OK, so that's the bottom line with that, guys. If you're only buying dividend stocks, you're limiting yourself. By the way, in the description, I got a 70 percent off flash sale going for the Becoming Master of the Stock Market course going here today. So if you guys want to take advantage of that, make sure you go ahead and do that. All right. So with that being said, those are the five ways you can make a lot more money from the stock market. Uh, I'll take Q&A for a few minutes from you guys and, and see what you guys have to ask me here. And uh, anything about stock market investing in general, I would be happy to uh, kind of answer those. Whoops, let me see here. Um, what are your thoughts on index fund investing? Index fund, is, uh, index fund investing is great. Uh, and by the way, like for those of you who don't know what buying an index fund is, it's basically like you know, you could basically buy an index fund that tracks like the S&P 500. So however much the S&P 500 goes up or down is pretty much how much your account will go up or down. There's no work involved with it. And pretty much like how the stock market goes over the long term is how you'll do over the long term. OK, and in my opinion, there's no problem with that. It's not what I like to do because I like to try to outperform the market. But if you don't feel like putting in the work, the next best thing to pick an individual stocks is like, you know, basically uh, index fund investing, in my opinion. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, how about Baba? Somebody's asking me about Alibaba. I love Alibaba. Uh, it might be my sixth or seventh biggest investment, but I love Alibaba. Um, let's see. Do you think the stock are going to go back up tomorrow? You know, who knows? Uh, short-term stock predictions. That's not a, that's not for winners. Okay. Uh, Lydia says you can have both dividend and growth stocks. Absolutely. Like I said, I got plenty of stocks that pay me out dividends, but I think it's best to not just focus on dividends. But, you know, you can do it either way. Uh, let's see what else we got here. When do you take a profit from a stock to invest in another? So how I like to think about this is, is the stock overvalued? Okay, now a lot goes into that in itself. Okay, we cover that in the Becoming Master of the Stock Market course. A lot goes into if a stock's overvalued. But if I feel a stock is overvalued or pretty close to overvalued, I'll sell out of that stock, okay? Another reason for me to sell a stock and take a profit is if I feel like there's a better place to put my money. So if I feel like, um, you know, we're up on this position good, and oh man, we're gonna make 5,000 bucks or 10,000 bucks or whatever amount of money it is on this particular stock. And um, I'm like, there might be some growth still there, but there's this other stock that I think we're gonna make way more money in, then I'll go ahead and take a profit in that stock. Um, and that's just what it is. You know, if you feel like there's a better place to put the money, you, you know, in my opinion, you, you got to always stay diversified in the stock market, but at the same time, you got to always have your money in the best position to make the most money possible. And so if, if I feel like there's, you know, a, a better stock for my money to go in, I'm going to sell, I'm going to take that profit and I'm going to put that money in the other stock. Okay. Uh, do you think these tariffs today, uh, were to sim stimulate further rate cuts? They, they possibly, you know, they possibly could have been. I think really at the end of the day, I think uh, what Trump is trying to do more than likely is he's trying to basically make U.S. companies want to manufacture more in the United States and also get um, leverage over China and those situations. And I think his plan, and we'll see if it actually works, but is to hit companies so hard in the corporate profits that they say they have to manufacture products in the United States again, because they're going to lose so much profit on these tariffs because the tariffs are so ridiculously high that for some companies, it might actually make sense to actually manufacture some of the products back in the United States. Um, so that's what he's trying to do. We'll see if it works or not. You know, it remains to be seen if it'll work. 
Um, but I think that's really yeah, at the end of the day what they're trying to do. Love the AirPods, says Sean. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you think Ford and GM are trash? Somebody asked. Uh, well, trash is a, hard, uh, is a pretty harsh statement. Do I think Ford and GM are, are trash? That's a tough statement, man. Um, I don't think they're trash. I think Ford. I think Ford is definitely behind the game as far as electric vehicles. I know they're going to try to come out with the uh, F one fifty of some kind that's electric. Um, I think they're just way behind the ball game. Ford really is, is a long way behind the ball game. GM's trying to do things, but they haven't really been successful as electric vehicles yet. They tried the Bolt and the Volt and all those different ones, and they, you know I, I don't want to call them trash, but they're not where they need to be. Let's put it that way. They're not where they need to be when it comes to electric vehicles and this, this new wave of electric vehicles that's coming over the next five, 10 years into mass amounts. They're not where they need to be when it comes to self-driving, although GM bought cruise automation, so that definitely helps. Ford uh, is way, way, way behind in that game, so they're not necessarily trash. It's just they're behind where they need to be, especially as companies that have massive cash flows, companies that are supposed to be forward thinking. They should be so... They should be, you know, they shouldn't. Why does Tesla have an advantage in electric vehicles and self-driving vehicles? They shouldn't, honestly. They're like a little guy. They're like a little guy company. And these companies like Ford and GM have let them just come in and take dominant market shares of electric vehicles and get way out in front of everybody when it comes to like Model 3 and then the Model Y coming. That shouldn't have happened. Like Ford and GM should have like squashed them five, 10 years ago and they haven't. And now over the next five or 10 years, they're going to have some real questions about the viability of their business as we move full scale to electric vehicles and as we move full scale to self-driving and we'll see how they compete. But, you know, it shouldn't be the way it is. Let's put it that way. They should have already squashed them a long time ago. Uh, let's see. How many stocks makes an ideal portfolio in terms of diversity? Uh, who asked that question? Marcelo asked that question. Oh, it really depends. So, if you have a smaller amount of money, generally speaking, you want to have less stocks. So if you have under, let's say, $10,000, maybe like three to five stocks is good for you. And of course, it depends on your personality and what you feel comfortable with and all those sorts of things. But if you have a, a smaller amount of money, generally less stocks, the more money you get, generally, the more stocks you want to have, the more diversified out you want to be. And then if you're talking about like, retirement age or you're getting into your late 40s 50s 60s then you want to be more index fund oriented uh, oriented and just kind of going up and down with the markets and things like that but the, the time to really take advantage of buying individual stocks and going after it and really trying to get great gains and trying to get that 20 percent per year or 30 percent per year or whatever that's when you're young in my opinion meaning you're like 20s 30s maybe 40s to a certain extent but as you get older you obviously generally speaking want to take less risk um, because you, you know, want you don't want to make a necessarily a huge mistake or something like that. Uh, when you're, when you're those ages, but if you've got a ton of experience, you shouldn't really make big mistakes. So that's uh, the good thing about starting young and getting experience. Um, can you prove you are not AI created by Elon Musk to promote Tesla? I cannot, I cannot system cannot process that. <laughs> uh, what do you think of Alibaba's Hong Kong IPO and stock split? Not much. I mean, they're going to split the stock. I think it's a one to eight. Uh, so all the Sally Baba shareholders are going to get eight shares instead of one. But for those who don't know, they're also going to cut the share price by an eighth as well. Um, nothing much about it. It's just different. You know, not a lot of companies do that nowadays. They'd like to just let their share prices go to a thousand. And it is what it is. So uh, not, a, not a huge opinion on that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Someone says Tesla. Uh, Bob the Builder says Tesla will double in a year. Uh, Marcelo says, thanks uh, for the explanation, Jeremy. Oh, somebody just sent, Nick just sent a $5 super chat. Thank you for this uh, $5 super chat. Do you believe uh, intrinsic value, DCF valuation models are important? <sighs> well, I believe in my own process, which is essentially, well, it's a pretty long process. I don't know if I want to explain it all right now, but I believe in some of the most important factors I believe in is looking at forward PE. I think looking at uh, trailing PE is important to get some judgment on where the business is now. I think looking at price to sales ratio against peers is pretty important. But I think some of the most important things to look at when it comes to stocks is actually looking at the business model. And this is where some people, you know, 
might not like my approach, but you've got to really look at the business model. And there's no numbers you can look at to really understand a business model, okay? You can look at an income statement and you'd be like, oh, their revenues are this and, oh, their gross margins are this and, oh, their net income's this and their gross profits this and blah, blah, blah. And those are all very important factors. But at the end of the day, you've got to really look at a business model and you've got to be able to forecast by reading the 10Q, reading the 10K, you got to be able to forecast where that business model is going over future years. And do you see them as a, a, a business that can expand by quite a bit, meaning 50%, 100%, maybe more than 100%? Or is this a business model that you don't see much growth in and is going to shrink over time? And so, so often, a lot of people love to just get caught up in the numbers, in the mathematics behind it. And like I said, all those things are important. Price to sales ratio, P ratios, forward P ratios, um, gross margins. All these things are extremely important to look at. And we talk about them in the course and they're all the things I look at. But at the end of the day, you've got to make a business decision on a stock. And is that business going to grow in the future? And how much is it going to grow versus what the forward P is at in a particular time and the price to sales ratio and all those sorts of things? How much growth does that business really have? You have to be able to make that fundamental business decision on if that company is a great investment or not. And if you can't do that, then your returns will always be extremely limited. If you ask me, why has Warren Buffett been such a great investor over the past, I don't know, 50, 60 years? Not because he knows the mathematics better than anybody, because if you're just judging off mathematics, right? Um, you know, and just math formulas and just looking at ratios, a computer could probably do a better job than us. But if you're talking about you're going to get great gains over the long term, you got to be able to judge that business that is going to expand dramatically in the future and the market hasn't even priced it in. OK, because think about it. Like if you're thinking about it as just the mathematics side of things, you would never like outperform the market because the market would already have things priced in and all those sorts of things. Where you get real outperformance in the market, the stock market, where you can really outperform is when you see a business that has an unbelievable opportunity, is very undervalued, and that, that business executes the way it is, you know, the way it's supposed to. The management team does a great job, and you, know, you get those unbelievable gains. That's where the real money is made in the stock market. That's where the real money is made. If it was just about formulas and whatnot, there would be no money to be made in this game. You know, there would be no money to be made in this game. It's all, you know, at the end of the day, it's really about judging businesses. And you get better and better at judging businesses through experience and through years in the market. I can tell you my ability to judge a business now and how much they'll be able to expand in future years has gone up dramatically over the last, let's say, five years versus the previous five years or something like that. Um, so I'll leave it at that. That was kind of an elaborate answer, though. Uh, somebody says Prudential has great dividend. Uh, just took a hit too. What do you think of Visa stock lately? Eh, it's one of those stocks. that's like a blah stock. You know, it's got a rich valuation on it. Visa does, and you know, limited growth. Let's put it that way. It's a blah stock. Uh, what else we got here? Are you invested in cryptocurrency? I'm not at the moment. Uh, it's possible I could be in the future, but not at the moment. <clears throat> Thoughts on McDonald's? Another stock that's kind of like a blah stock. Got a rich valuation on it. It's like, you know, uh, McDonald's is just kind of like, it's a blah stock. It's like a Visa stock. It's boring. You'll probably make some decent money in it over time. But um, did you know when has a separate stock listing in its Macau property? Yes. There are a lot of companies that do business in China and Asia in general and have actually Hong Kong listings as well. Uh, what about GE? It's in turnaround mode. It's not really the turnaround company I like. I like, I sometimes like turnaround companies. But when they're smaller cap companies and I can really get my head around the business well and I can understand where that business is going like an elf. Elf's a perfect example of a, a turnaround opportunity I saw. Small business, easy to understand. You know, a company like GE, so many moving parts there. They sold so many businesses off over the last few years. Company's huge. It's trying to turn around, but it, it's, it's hard to identify what's the opportunity there when it's a bigger company, in my opinion. If you're looking at turnarounds, the, the best companies are usually those companies that have a $500 million market cap, a billion dollar market cap, because sometimes you can get some unbelievable opportunities in some of those. They're just easier to see, in my personal opinion. Okay. Um, somebody says, no one write anything what to do. What do you think of Uber? Uh, I'm not sure if somebody's asked me about Uber. Uh, Uber's interesting, actually, at these levels. Um, not necessarily a stock I'll buy, but not the worst stock. I will say that. I think they got big opportunities in front of themselves over the future years. Uh, but self-driving vehicles is going to be a big thing for them. They're going to have to get on that wave. Um, 
Why do you think Amazon will be bigger than Tesla long term? Because retail web service market is smaller than ten trillion dollar uh, energy or cap energy industry. I think Tesla has more room to grow. Uh, these are these are big questions. I mean, Tesla is such a small company when it comes to the energy sector as of right now. Uh, Tesla's business is dominated by electric vehicles as of right now. You know, Tesla has huge opportunity in, in energy, but. You know, if I think about really my bullish thesis on Tesla, it has nothing to do with energy business. You know, energy business. So, so let me think about it this way. So, I have two. I have two of my bigger investments are Tesla and Facebook. Okay, uh, Facebook's my biggest investment. Tesla is my fourth biggest investment, somewhere around there, right? So, Facebook, my fundamental, like, like you know, investing thesis around that that company is that they'll grow advertising revenues huge over future years. And that, you know, advertising rates will go up, more and more businesses will jump on. And, you know, this is going to continue to grow big into the future. And Libra cryptocurrency for Facebook is this massive opportunity in front of the company. And maybe it's something huge, but I'm not invested in Facebook for Libra cryptocurrency. That's just a that's just an awesome thing if that happens. Now, Tesla, on the other hand, is a very similar situation because Tesla I'm invested in because of electric vehicles. And I think they're going to be have the dominant market share. And I think they're going to have a huge opportunity for self-driving cars, all those sorts of things. Okay. So I look at Tesla and I'm like, that's, that's a massive opportunity. Now the energy side of the business for Tesla, that's exciting, but that's not why I'm invest, invest in Tesla. If they happen to grow that business into some massive business, great, cool. Okay. But I, you know, uh, for people thinking like, you know, Tesla is going to be bigger than Amazon in the future. It's certainly possible, but you know, Right now, Amazon's got a market cap that's 20 times, maybe more than 20 times the size of Tesla. You know, it's a long way to go from there, guys. It's a long way to go from there, okay? Uh, somebody says, do you think Neo could meet uh, expectations one day? Would you buy it personally? It's possible I could buy Neo at some point. Um, you know, I don't know. The stock has gotten a lot cheaper, needless to say. It's gotten a lot more interesting. Are you, are you dizzy from walking in circles? No, I don't, I don't get dizzy. Your opinion on Microsoft and Disney overvalued? Microsoft, I don't like the valuation nearly as much as some other companies that are big tech, Apple, uh, Facebook, Facebook specifically, even Google. You know, I just don't like Microsoft's valuation. Not necessarily I would say it's overvalued. I would just say I like some big tech more than Microsoft. And Disney's solid. Like Disney's as solid as solid gets. It's ran a lot though. So now Disney excuse me, the streaming service needs to really come through because Disney stocks run a lot over the past year or so. Uh, Zillow valuation, been performing very well since you mentioned it. Yeah, Zillow, I think, has a huge opportunity in front of themselves. They got to see if they can pull it off. But uh, Zillow, um, I think, is going to be a company that, I mean, you could already make an argument that's fundamentally changed a lot about real estate industry. But in the future, I think it's going to change uh, a lot more, needless to say. Uh, somebody says, what is this? Uh, Macaco it says Tesla will buy Lithium Americas Corporation. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, we'll have to see about that. Is Amazon overvalued? That's a tough one. I mean, you could have made a, an argument that Amazon's been overvalued since the 90s. Literally, you can go back to the 1990s and made an argument that Amazon was overvalued every step along the way. Every year along the way, you could have made an argument that Amazon was overvalued. But at the end of the day, that company just finds a way to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. So uh, it's tough, guys. It's tough to say uh, Amazon's overvalued ever. You know, it's not my favorite valuation in the stock market, but at the same time, by the way, in the description, guys, you want to become a master of the stock market course. We're doing a 70% off flash sale today. So if you want to go ahead and learn exactly how I look, what I look for in stocks and whatnot, go ahead and check out that. All right. I'll uh, take a few more Q&A and then we're going to jump off here, guys. Let's do a few last questions. Uh, somebody's asking about Express, please. What do you think? It's undervalued. I'll have to check into Express. I haven't checked into them opinion uh, recently. Uh, Caesar says, opinion on Elon coming up with all these massive ideas for Tesla, but can never seem to focus his attention on one project at a time. <sighs> Elon is what Elon is. Like that you, you buy into Tesla, it, you just have to deal with Elon. Like there's a lot of great things about him. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, he does get distracted sometimes. He does talk about these big ideas and, and things like that. And uh, it is what it is. You know, I've just learned to I've just learned to deal with it. 
honestly. You know, it's just – it is what it is. I love kind of big thinking, and that's who Elon Musk is. He's going to think about big things and big projects and, and you know, how, you know, this is going to change humankind, and that's just who he is. Uh, so if you buy Tesla stock, you got to just understand that's what you, you're going to be dealing with. You're going to deal with a guy that's got these massive ideas. Sometimes they work out. Sometimes they don't. Um, but if you look at where that company's gone, like it's amazing the, the things they're doing. So, you know, he's obviously doing something right. That's the bottom line there. Uh, let's see. I think I missed a super chat somewhere along here. Oh, thank you so much for the uh, $2 super chat there. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, AMC, please. Movie theater stocks. Marvel, Star Wars, good swing trade. AMC I've looked into. Oh, we also, uh, Steven, thank you for the $2 super chat. Albemarle Lithium, that I'm not even sure about. I'd have to look into that company. Um, but in regards to the AMC question, somebody asked me about AMC movie theaters. I've looked at that stock several times over the past few months. And, uh, you know, the stock's just dropped like a rock. And it's interesting. But at the same time, I don't like the, the balance sheet's bad. Balance sheet really bad with that company. And, uh, you know, ah, just, you know, and then they're not even making profits recently. So it's like really bad balance sheet, not making profits recently. Do I really want to buy a stock that's not making profits recently and has a really bad balance sheet and is having trouble growing the business? I mean, let's say it's a bad balance sheet and they're not making profits, but they're growing revenues like crazy. Maybe that's an opportunity. But when you're like AMC, you're, you're not growing revenues. You're not making profits. You have a bad balance sheet. Why would I want to get involved with that stock? It's just, it's too much of a risk. You always got to think about risk reward in the stock market. Um, and man, the ri the risk reward is just not in favor of AMC in my personal opinion. Okay. Um, that's kind of my thoughts there, but it is interesting. Every time a stock falls crazy like that thoughts on AT&T and Verizon, somebody asked, uh, big telecom companies, you know, if I'm looking at 5g, I think Verizon might be the, the winner there. You know, we'll, we'll say who's the biggest winner. Um, if I'm thinking about telecom, usually T-Mobile and Verizon might be my favorite plays there, but stocks with limited growth, man. That's the bottom line with those. I like some stocks that have some big potential growth. And if I think about AT&T and Verizon, really, really limited uh, growth. Al says, since we all know about the Gigafactory opening for Tesla, would it really jump? Uh, would it really jump? Um, I don't I think you should really look at Tesla stock as, you know, a stock that's going to jump because China Gigafactory opens. Everybody knows that factory is coming. I think if you're looking at it on a fundamental basis, companies should be able to grow massively bigger because of that Gigafactory. Always think about the fundamentals of companies when you're investing and not what a short-term stock price could be. Uh, Daniel Sanchez says, uh, thank you for the $1.99 super chat, by the way. Baidu, a buy low uh, 100s or maybe even 90s. Baidu is very interesting to me. Baidu is a company I have thought about investing in. I only have one direct investment in China right now, and that's Alibaba. And I have one indirect uh, investment in China, which is Wind Resorts, which is my smallest position. And uh, obviously, they're not a Chinese company, but I mean, they do so much business in China out of Macau. It's like ridiculous. Like the majority of their profits and revenues come from Macau. But I have thought about adding a second you know, Chinese-based company and Baidu is very much a possibility. I've thought about Tencent a little bit, but more and more I looked at it, I think Baidu might be a play for me. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens there. There's a lot of U.S. companies I'm still a little more interested in at the particular time, but I do like them. Um, do you ever look at, at free cash flow instead of net income? Sometimes, but I, I judge more off of net income for most companies. Unless it's a special situation, like a company that, you know, is clearly not making profits like a Tesla, for instance. Tesla, at this stage in the game, it's more important to look at free cash flow because it's a growth monster. It's a company that grew 60% revenues last quarter. If you're thinking about a growth monster company, more important to look at free cash flow if you're thinking about most companies, which most companies are not growing revenue 60, 80, 100%. Okay, most companies aren't doing that. So, most companies, in my opinion, it's, it's more important to look at net income unless it is an absolute growth beast, guys. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get off this live stream, guys. I really enjoyed it with you. Uh, thanks for being here. Hope you guys got some good value out of this. If you weren't here at the beginning, go ahead and watch this live stream back. It should be up on YouTube within the next 10 minutes. Um, we talked about five ways to make a lot more money in the stock market. And uh, that's definitely going to be something you guys are going to want to watch. So go ahead and watch the live stream back when it comes out in like 10 minutes. Check out the video I posted on Financial Education 2 today. And um, anyways, hope you guys have a great day and peace.